All right, everybody. Welcome to the 10,000 live stream. With hey, the, uh, good, morning. good morning. So um, we are going to jump straight into it. Today we're talking about dot loop. Um, and um, I'll give you guys the quick little like, where did that loop come from? How long have we had it? So we were talking about this earlier. We we're trying to determine how many years we've had it. I think we've had that loop since 2012. We were the uh, first brokerage in West Michigan, maybe the state of Michigan that brought dot loop in. And um, it wasn't super easy at first. We had 212 people that we were bringing over to dot loop. And um, at once, like all of, all at once, because you know, if you were gonna, if you kind of just like just kind of slow play it in, you're not going to get all the adoption. So we just kind of were like, boom, bandaid off. Let's just launch. We're going to go for this thing. So everyone did it. And it was rough at first. We had some people that weren't super pumped. But I remember getting a call from Sue Prins. She called me and she was like, I think we were like a week in. She's like, Paul, I just did a sale while sitting in a chair on the beach in Florida. <laughs> nice. like, normally, and normally at that time, us realtors were used to being like, okay, I've got to drive. I've got to figure that find the nearest FedEx or Kinko's in Tampa yeah. to try and figure out how to do a deal. Now I've got to find a fax machine. You know, it's like, well, here's my fax number. No, did you miss a digit? Try again. You know, that kind of stuff. So Wait anyway, the confirmation page. Oh uh, gosh, it was, yeah. miserable. <laughs> it was terrible. And then this is my, the funniest thing. Look, so then, you know, when you're using a fax machine, it timestamps it, right? Every yeah. single time you fax it, timestamps it. Well, your, your PA, your purchase agreement or your buy sell agreement, um, gets smaller and smaller and smaller every single time it timestamps it. So the time you've gone back and forth three or four times negotiating, you can't even read the PA anymore because it's so small because it's just a cascading list of timestamps along the top. Anyways, all right, Tracy. So why are we talking about that loop today? We're talking about dot loop because we're talking about how to be organized and why dot loop is really your opportunity to be organized. I I, I love the example of the metal filing cabinet, right? So whether you ever worked from home or in an office, no matter where you've been, inevitably at some point you've encountered the need for a file drawer. And so if we visually think about those big metal filing cabinets that have the drawers in them, inside the drawers, if you were to pull it out and look inside, you've got files inside those drawers and inside those files are documents. And so if we visually think about this app on our phone or this website on our computer as a metal filing cabinet, it's gonna help you organize your brain in order to organize your files. So, um, so that's why I want you to think about it, that inside your loop, that is your file. That's your, that is your, you'll love it, that mine's green, but that's your paper file, right? That's your loop. And inside your loop, there's gonna be documents, right? And those documents pertain to a specific property address. And so by having that, it allows uh, Paul, Kim, Doug, myself, our BAs, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, um, it gives us the ability to go into your loop and see what's happening there. Um, and so that's, that's sort of the big picture for today. It's filing cabinet. What does that look like and why should you be organized? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So, um, you know, I remember going to closings and carrying my whole file with me, mm -hmm. right? Just in case something came up. Mm -hmm. But now between having all the forms in dot loop and then the closing file checklist, when I need something, I just go to my closing file checklist. Oh yeah, what's the closing date on that, right? Mm -hmm. So we wanted to talk to you a little bit about, we're going to give you an example here in a little bit, but we wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, a little bit more about why it's so important. So say you call one of us, broker support, and you have a um, question on your file, or you're having a problem with something. The first thing I'm going to ask you, or we're going to ask you is what's the address and who do you represent, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go into the file and it just helps us to make sure so we are accurate at giving you proper advice, right? And I'm going to go in and I'm going to look at that file and see how it was written. So one of the first basics of dot loop is a, please be sure to have your forms in there, right? Even if you're still a paper writer, yeah. ask your BA to help you scan it in, right? That's, that's, that would really, really help us a lot. And real quick, Kim, even before yep. then, yep. what about the naming of the file? Yep. And we're going to talk about okay, that. Okay. 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 Yeah. Right. You're ahead of us. We're going to get okay, there. Okay. Yep. So that's I'm so chill. I'm chill. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna, so here's the thing. Sometimes we go in there and there's three loops with the yeah. same address. Yeah. So then 
we want to help you and we want to be efficient with you. And then we have to go, which loop is the right loop? Right. And then we want them, there's maybe two buy sell so or purchase agreement. So one example would be you write a purchase agreement, right? You send it over and there's a certain way that dot loop talks to the other agent. And if that's not done properly, then there's going to be two loops that come in. So then we, then we want to uh, talk to you about archiving the one that's not executed. I actually rename my purchase agreement executed by sell agreement, right? Yeah. So um, go ahead, Paul, your thoughts yeah. on that. I was going to say, I also do, I, I, mine are fully signed or, or, or complete or whatever. I usually name it completed PA or, you know, you know, I get rid of, I want it to be very clear because when you're in there, you've got title companies looking at these files, lenders, and I can tell you from experience, I have sent wrong PAs, I've received wrong PAs, pedal companies have received wrong PAs. It can get messy when you're not. You just wanna have clarity in that folder. But I'll tell you very interestingly, okay, Kim, let's say you list a property and we all know there's only seven properties available in Portage, Michigan right now. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So let's say you list a property. There's a good chance you're gonna get three to five five-star realtors writing offers on that property. Correct. Okay. So now you've got your listing loop you, and then you've got five other loops over here that are all inside of our world that we can see because there's now, so we could have, sometimes you, we could have 10 loops or more that all say the same address. Mm -hmm. So you call me, you call Don, you call whomever for help on that file or, or whatever. And I'm, I mean, I'm literally cl clicking, we're, we're, we're clicking into these loops to try and figure out which one it's, it's in, look through them out. Okay, in, look through them out. So sometimes with the naming structure, what really, really helps Kim, it is if is if your if your loop was named one two three Main Street hyphen Kim Anderson, because then I would immediately know that's Kim's loop. Mm -hmm. It's and I wish that dot loop was better on the back end. Mm -hmm. And so I got, and guys, I know that a lot of you guys make suggestions to us about how to make dot loop better, but just a really quick two seconds on this. Dot loop is what you call legacy software. So dot loop was bought by Zillow. Okay. But dot loop was created by a guy that lives in Ohio. He was a great guy. He built a great company. He sold it, made a lot of money. The problem is Zillow had now had, a, a, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of agents using this application and they they're trying to make it better, but it's, it's very difficult to take an app and restart and start from scratch. So dot loop is an iteration upon iteration upon iteration of improvements. And so that's why we can't solve some of these more simple problems. Like the naming structures should be very right. easy to solve, but we can't yet. So anyways, yeah. Yep. I, create, I, create some challenges. I, I like the so we talked about this and Kim is going to share a loop with us um, okay. in a little bit to kind of walk us through a loop. But what I typically do is this when I meet a client, right, I've got a new client and they're they have a pre approval letter, they introduce themselves to me. The first thing I do is I go into that loop and I make a loop and I call it Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Mary Smith, whoever it is, they have a name. Okay, and inside that loop, my bottom folder will be that pre-approval letter because that's the beginning. That's the only document I have for that client. So I make a loop, I put their name on it and that loop stays that name, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, until I get an accepted offer. Once I get an accepted offer, it's one, two, three Main Street and then dash whichever one agent on my team it belongs to. So if it was me, it would be one, two, three Main Street dash Tracy Johnson. Okay. I like the way you're thinking because the bottom line is you could write how many different offers for Mr. and Mrs. Smith, right? Right, it, it, exactly. It's still in that loop. Yep, exactly. And so those easy. offers are just going to be just that. They're just going to be offers that were written. If they never get accepted, they just get archived. And so we keep writing offers in that same loop until finally we have a fully executed purchase agreement. So all other documents are, are now archived. And the only one that's relevant to this loop is the one that's fully executed, at which point Mr. and Mrs. Smith's loop now changes because it has a property address. It now becomes 123 Main Street dash Tracy Johnson. Mm -hmm. yep. I, like, I, I like that a lot because again, I, I've written a lot of purchase agreements for people. And, and then I've gone back over my loops to say, wait a minute, I've written this one for them, this one for them, this one for them. What am I thinking, right? So again, this is just a, a way more efficient way to do that. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that is so very, very important, um, often I'll talk to an agent. I was helping one yesterday and she's like, I never got any feedback from anyone. So when I went into the loop, it was never submitted. So mm -hmm. the so the end goal is for you, A, to be organized and get all the way through your transaction and make it easy for five-star accounting to pay you. So if we don't know your loop is there, 
we haven't had a chance to look at it. We haven't had a chance to make sure you have all your documents signed. And therefore, accounting will hold up paying you till we get some of these forms, till we get these forms in. So the one of the first things, go ahead, Paul. Yep. Okay, we have one quick question. Okay, go ahead. And I yep. think this is pertinent here. Okay. So, um, let me let me see who asked the question again. Okay, it's Portia Davis. So Portia says, hey, how do we delete documents? I only see the option to archive them. This yep. is a great question about why we use dot loop and why it has some of these weird things like you can't delete things. Yes, exactly. Portia, the simplest answer here is we are required by law to keep all documents related to that transaction for seven years. And if someone can delete a file, like let's say you just went in there, let's say you were disgruntled one day, heaven forbid Porsche, I don't think that you would be, but let's say you were mad at me and you're like, I am so mad at Paul, I'm gonna delete all these files. And you just start deleting things, right? Well, all of a sudden we're in a really weird position now because the state of Michigan has required us to maintain those files and we no longer can because you've deleted them. So um, that's why there's only an archive button. So what you'll do in this, you'll use archive kind of like a delete. If you want it out of your face, you just want to archive it. So that's the recommended use. Mm -hmm. You can even, uh, we have some people who will make a folder called, you know, archive, you know, wasted documents or whatever it is, right? And they'll drag all those bad, annoying documents down there into that old, old, old like individual folder and they'll just archive that folder. But I just individually archive the files I, I keep. And that's why it's good to maintain your loops to make sure you're maintaining them properly active active documents leave there things like 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 tracy said old offers that she had written those will just get archived those go they, they disappear out of sight out of mind archive them yep like only things that are relevant to the transaction are the things that should be in your loop that are active yep everything like, else clean up if if it's the one that you sent the offer over but then there's another document where it's executed just archive that old one right and the other thing before we share our screen is um, be sure to fill out your closing file checklist. You will notice you can't get past that. You have to have your closing file checklist, which will be the number one form in there. And it gives us a summary. I always call it like, a, a, like your Bible. It's like a summary of your transaction. So it's really important because Star Title is looking at that closing file checklist. So when there's a change, say we sold the house for 220,000. And then after we negotiated repairs, we reduced the price to 218,000. Make sure you keep that closing file checklist updated. Or maybe you said, oh, seller to pay $2,000 towards buyer's closing costs. Because when, when title gets ready to um, prepare your closing statements, they are going to look at that closing file checklist. Mm -hmm. So it, it just mm -hmm. makes your life more efficient, makes it easier for us to help you, right? And um, just, and the BAs are in there, the branch administrators, some of you might not know. So what's this look like? You submit your file for review and there are, um, what, are you, what do we call them? Mobile loopers? There's loopers. Yeah, we have, we have, yeah, we have um, a couple of branch admins that yep. are usually, you'll see around offices. They're kind of helping keep our offices, you know, you, it, their biggest portion of their job, it's kind of like the office is the tip of the iceberg for them. The biggest yep. portion of their jobs is managing loops and, and reviewing files on the back end. Yep. So they're in there and what they're going to do is they're going to just have a checklist. Branch administrators don't help with content, but they will help you to know which forms you have. And then if you have a question about content, they will send you back to one of the broker supports. So they're going to make sure that you have all the proper documents in there so that when your transaction gets to close, we're not chasing anything. It's all right there. It gets submitted. Your closing documents get submitted. They get it over to accounting. You, tech, you basically don't have to do anything at that point. They will take care of it. They will upload your documents, goes to accounting, they'll process it and you'll get paid first thing in the morning, you're gonna have your check. Yep. So if there's motivation, the motivation is payday sometimes. Can, right? can I add one thing to this? So early on in dot loop, we were having the branch administration team who's the, our, our looping team, essentially. What they were doing is they were, okay, really, I don't want to get too confusing here, but everything was going into one pot and it was updating us all the time and it was shifting around always, right? So like, it was very hard for us to review your loop perfectly because of the way dot loop was set up, it was, it was a constantly moving target. Like it wasn't one list. It's not like when you submit your loop, it gets in line and it just waits until we get to it. What was happening was every time you touched your loop, it put you back to the bottom of the line. Oh. So it created a nightmare for us to, to review loops. So what we did is we made a couple different processes now to, to solve that. 
But so what we've done, what we do is this, we review your loop once initially, okay? And we're going to go, hey, awesome, you've nailed your loop. Everything's here that is, that is perfect. And we, we, you'll see approved. That means that when accounting gets that, accounting is going to go, oh, dang, this one's approved. Cool. I can kind of fly through this. I can review things really fast and I can cut that check and get that person paid the same day. Because yeah. we have fast turnaround on pay. Yeah. Some people we hear have four or five, six days before they get a check. We're, we're usually within 24 hours or less. It hits your account. Mm -hmm. So that is what we do in the first step. When, in, if you're missing documents, you will see a note that says you're missing documents. It doesn't mean that we're losing sleep over it. We recognize that you may be just, oh shoot, got, forgot to load that one in or whatever it might be. But we're gonna let you know, hey, if you wanna be paid timely, you need these documents. Then what happens is we're not gonna bug you again until seven days prior to the closing. Based upon your estimated closing date, we mark it into our system and our team goes, here's what's coming up in the next seven days. And we go into those loops and we go, we're gonna give them one more review. And we call that managerial review. And that's done by Emily Hinken, who's a long time behind the scenes employee, um, part-time who reviews those for us seven days prior to the closing. And, and then at that point in time, if your file is missing documents, she'll either mark it approved or it'll still say missing documents. And you'll wanna get that cleared up um, as soon as possible so you can get paid super fast because we don't wanna hold on to your money. Sometimes we have checks just sitting on the desk. We just, we really want to get those, ke those checks out to you fast. So, you know, that's what that is. So we, we're not going to try and hound you for these documents, but we do need them for our own accounting purposes and state requirements, all sorts of things like that. Hey, Paul, and you know what I love about that checklist? It's kind of fun. If you could, if you go back to the beginning of the transaction, when you submit for review, whether it's a listing or whether it's pending, and I always say, we get my little love note, right? They said on my screen and say, hey, Doug, you forgot this, or you forgot this. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. what a way to learn dot loop, right? For those of us that are just, just kind of getting into the game with this, you got to think about a guy like Doug Hale, who's, I mean, dot loop was new to me, mm -hmm. right? Yep. 20 years in real estate. Paul, what you just said, 2012 right is yep, when yep. we started with that loop. Yep, yep. there are companies in our area right now and i worked for one of those companies for the last last 10 years uh well previous 10 years but they still don't use that loop mm -hmm. and they sell a lot of mm -hmm. real estate so what i said to you guys earlier on in our conversation was isn't it interesting that a company like this as kind of disorganized as they are they sell that much real estate. What would happen if they had that loop? Yeah. If they had it working the way we have it working. Mm -hmm. So that is a huge tool that I think we just need to get better and better and better at, at, at learning all the intricacies, yep. of that yep. loop, which is good. Yep. Yeah. And I think too, you know, when you've been doing this long enough, when you reach that, even that three-year mark, you could be having clients that you sold a house to in year one, come back in year three, and they're like, hey, I'm ready to upgrade. Hey, what was the age of my roof or my furnace? They don't remember. They don't know. And if you have a loop that's set up, that's organized, there's the seller's disclosure statement. Boom, you just go into that loop. You reshare it to your client. Hey, here's what we knew about the house when you bought it. What kinds of improvements have you done to it since you owned it? It's just excellent. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they will, they will come out of the woodwork and they'll say, Tracy, can you send me that disclosure statement? I'm just curious or, hey, you know what? I was doing some taxes and I, I needed my closing statement. Do you have a copy of that? Or whatever it might be. And you'll get these questions. Yep. I like Kim's story about that. Yep. That actually happened like sometime in April. Um, I sold a client's home. They moved to Las Vegas. Um, they weren't like super organized kind of people. So they had the closing. I handed them their packet. Off to Vegas they went, right? April, he calls me, he's sitting at his tax accountant's desk. He's like, oh my gosh, Kim, I need that closing statement. Do you have that? I'm like, sure. I send it over to him like 30 seconds. He goes, oh my gosh, you are amazing. So it's one of the ways to win because I just went in on my phone. I don't even think I was at my computer. Yeah. I went on my phone, found the dot loop, found him, found the closing statement, share, bam, it's over. Yep. 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 Kim, can you share a loop to show us like what that looks like? Yep, let me share it. And then let's not forget to um, talk about when do I submit a loop for review? Yep. Oops, here we go. Yep. Oops, there's my desktop, sorry about that. There you go. All right, so this is Tracy's loop. So we're gonna let you lead. Tracy is amazing at her loops. So we're using this as a sample. So you talk and I will drive. Yep, so I'll probably go to the bottom of the loop first. Okay. 
So when I, uh, sorry, uh, to bottom of the, um, the files, the, the actual files that we created. So when we meet a client, the first thing we do is we make uh, all of, I like to make all my loops at once or all my files at once. So I have a buyer doc or I have a listing doc. That's my bottom. So those are my agency contracts. So no matter who you represent, there they are, they're in the loop. Um, and then the second folder I make is my pending docs. Now I'm not gonna have anything for pending docs at this point, except the pre-approval letter. I stick the pre-approval letter in pending docs. It stays there till I start writing offers. And for this client, I know who this client is. One, someone on my team represented them. And we probably wrote six to eight offers for this, for this client till eventually we got a fully executed uh, purchase agreement. So yep, here's the pre-approval letter. Um, and so that's pending docs. Everything that's in pending docs is, you can see what it says. It says Amberly, fully executed PA. So that's what Paul alluded to. We all use our own words. We don't care what you use, but when the BA comes in behind me, when I've submitted my loop for approval, you can see on the left there, Kim, if you point to it with your mouse, it says approve pending. That means that I've submitted the loop and the office has looked at it and said, okay, this loop meets all of our requirements for oversight. And we know that this file is going to um, get paid because it says approved pending. And that's what we're looking for, right? Everyone wants to get paid. So again, this is how I do my loops. I like the earnest money to stand out. I want to know that it's there. I want to know that I've gotten a copy of it. So I have a folder for EMD. I have a folder for the title docs. If title docs are not in that folder, I know that I've not shared them with my client. It's like there's like it's like a red flag right there. And whether I'm on my phone or sitting at my desk, I can see things really quickly. Then I have a closing file checklist folder. That's that important folder that the the office is looking for. You can open that one, Kim. So this is the folder that literally you you can't remember your closing date. Boom, go in here. Tells you everything you need to know about the people involved in the transaction and um, um, what the title company, who the title companies are, contact information, et cetera. Can we make um, a note on right here? So you notice she doesn't have seller info because she's she is representing the buyer. And because yep. this is a neutral form, don't yep. feel like you have to go try to get a phone and an email from the person that's not your client. You're, yep. you're, whichever. Yep. I've had a lot of people ask that question. So that's a good point, Kim. Yep, yep. But do you see the HOA information? If, if, if Star Title is the title company for this file, this is the stuff they're going to need to know. They need to know who the HOA is and what their contact information is. So make this, this is an important form for communication to the office. What about this box, Tracy? Wait, where, okay, I can't um, see your thing. Um, if you'd like Star Title to assist you. Yes, yes. So they'll, they will communicate directly with your client. Oh, the other thing is, is if you put um, Star Title up here, in your closing, um, in this checklist, automatically title work will be ordered for, for you from Star Title, right? So here, since um, they're using a different title company, then it would be up to Tracy or Tracy's team member to send the purchase ag agreement physically over to the other title company. Yeah. But if you're using Star, they will go in, they can look at everything. They are automatically on your team, right? Yep, yeah. yeah. great. Okay, anything great. else on here? Nope, that's it on there. And then the, the last thing I like, and, and everybody's going to have their own, but it, this is all about becoming the pro. So yep. in, um, in the closing file checklist, you see copy of buyer checklist. Five Star Real Estate has produced these things, and we've done a really good job. This is one that I, this is one of my own, but go through your loop, find one of these checklists that helps you, you know, keep track of your, your, your file and each one of the steps in your file. It, and you can be reviewing, hey, what am I forgetting to do? Where, where am I supposed to be in this process? And so have one of these. I keep it in my closing file checklist folder because it's another checklist. Okay. So, um, and then lastly, is just the closing folder. Once you've closed, um, either the office will load those do documents for you into a folder or you will do it yourself, one or the other. So that's, you know, the nice part about this, we've recorded this. You can go back to this. You can review this again. Um, and, and use it as an example. Now, again, this is how I do my files. You might find that there's a better way for you to do them. But at the end of the day, it's that metal filing drawer that you pull out, you look in, things got to be organized. When Kim's client was in Vegas and they needed that folder, Kim knew exactly where to go from her phone or wherever she was to find that document and share it with her client. Right. And so just so to go back to one thing I didn't want to forget to tell you is when do I submit for review? Yes. So when you take a listing and it's complete, 
submit it for review. Once you, it's my understanding, Paul can correct me if it's not, but I, it's my understanding that unless you have a loop there when the earnest money comes in and you have it submitted, they don't know where to put it. Is that correct, Paul? Does that match um, that? If you, okay, if you, um, let's say you give us an EMD, you have no loop. Typically what will happen is our team will go in and make a loop and actually add you to the team and pop the EMD in there. Now you're probably depending on depending on 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 your level of technology technological ability, you might just go, okay, cool. I'll just use that loop now going forward. Or you may duplicate the effort and make a second loop. And now we've got your loop over here. We've got another EMD loop over here. You can see how it creates a bit of a mess. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's, we will, we will put it into, we will put it into dot loop someplace and we will add you to the team to, so the, you, so you can take ownership of that loop as well. Um, I would say that happens rarely, but it does happen. It does happen. I will tell you because, um, you know, but it's happening less and less now because people are generating those transactions within dot loop so often now where, you know, like Tracy said, she might write like 17 offers for this one client or something. And, you know, there might be a bunch of EMDs in there hypothetically. So, um yeah that's how that would work yeah and there's a lot of different ways to use dot loop so please feel free to reach out to your ba they can um help you with dot loop training i run sessions i'm sure tracy could run one with you um let us know we can do one mass zoom if if you want to set a time well i just um zoomed with an agent last week who needed a little bit of help with dot loop so the basics are going to be naming your loop and don't ever feel bad. No question is never a bad question. So maybe you're like, I just don't get all the basics. You know, I can Zoom with you for 30 minutes, help you how to know how to name your loop, set up templates, submit it for review, how to assign signatures, how to share documents. I mean, all the basics, we do have some cheat, but I am more than happy to, our team is more than happy to just help you so you're not struggling with this because it's an absolutely excellent tool for us. And I think, um, I think as you get more and more used to using it, you're going to find that it's going to, it's just going to take one more level of stress away from you. Yep. Yep. Agreed. All right. Okay. 30 yep. minutes. I thought we were going to go, well, they're going to make it a quick one here, but we, we did that. We did a 30 minute session. So that's cool. Yep. Um, hopefully you guys found this helpful. Um, I think that uh, the team brought some really great examples here of um, why dot loop Mm -hmm. and how it can be your best friend or it can be your worst enemy depending on how well you can organize things but work at it guys like like kim just said if you need help if you're struggling if you don't understand how or why some things work just raise a hand because okay. that's what we want to do we want to help so just raise a hand and we'll send doug straight over to <laughs> fix your problem so doug, doug, we just find well, you everything doug that's right thank you very much for that i needed that okay. well we're all here to help you this is your work team. support team call us with questions Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Happy 4th of right, July. Guys. Have a good day, everybody. See you guys. See you, Bye. See you later.